Hi there. This evening I will be doing a Q&A video and it is in celebration of the fact that I hit 1,000 subscribers on my channel. Thank you so much to all of you for subscribing. Um, you all make this little ASMR journey of mine extremely, extremely worthwhile. So during this Q&A, I will be doing some arm stroking and tracing on this little henna tattoo that I have here. I actually have a little orange stick to trace while I'm talking. I was at a little festival last week a little local one and they had henna tattoos and the girl that was doing them was just a student making a few extra euros on the side so I got a lovely kind of bracelet one and it's really cute it's already a few days old but it's still looking pretty good I really, really like it. I think it's so pretty. I just keep staring at my arm. <laughs> okay, so let me get into the Q&A. <laughs> so I, most of my questions are from YouTube. And I think I have one. Yeah, I have one from Instagram. And none from Twitter. <laughs> I was a bit sad about that. But I guess I didn't start Twitter that long ago. I don't have many followers, so... If you don't follow me on Twitter yet, you should get onto that. Okay, so the first question, this is not like in order of any kind, it's just how I threw them together. The first one on my list is actually from another ASM artist, and it's Mama Night Blossom. And she says, yay, congrats to you my dear. You deserve many more subscribers. The only way from here is up. Thank you. Um, she's actually not far from a thousand subscribers today. I think maybe even by the time I get this video out. So congratulations to her in advance. Um, I actually do watch her videos. I'll link her channel down below. Maybe you guys should subscribe and help her get to her thousand subscribers. I think it's a really important milestone as well for a channel. And then it goes on to say, I do have a question. I would like to know, what do you start at in ASMR? I guess she means what, what made you start in ASMR? And how did you come up with your channel name? Lots of love, Mama Bear. So for the first question, um, what made me start doing ASMR? I don't know if she wants to know like, how did I find ASMR, or why did I start my channel? Um, I might as well answer both. So, what made you start, or what got me started in ASMR? Well, the way that I found ASMR on YouTube was kind of just by mistake, really. I guess like most of us. Um, but for me, it was when I moved to France quite some time ago. I didn't speak French, and I didn't really get French telly. Um, so instead of watching French television, I um, I just watched lots of YouTube. And one day, I came across this video, and it was just a beauty box unboxing. But the girl was whispering. It was in French, and. I was so, so relaxed, <laughs> like mega tingles. Um, it was amazing. And I just saw ASMR in the title. And I was like, wow, what's ASMR? And then I just did the whole checking up on Wikipedia, searching for other videos. Basically got my mind blown <laughs> in a day. Um, so yeah, so that's how I found ASMR. And I'm quite an anxious person, 
which most of you probably are too, so you understand. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is great. And basically ever since, there hasn't been a week that's gone by that I've not watched a bunch of ASMR videos. Just like while I'm working, hanging out, or just relaxing, trying to go to sleep. Actually making the leap to making ASMR videos. Um, I don't know, it didn't seem like much of a leap to me. I think, I don't know, I mean, I like taking photos, um, I like creative things. I always wanted to get involved with something like that, something creative. So I just thought, okay. <laughs> and then I just did it. My first few videos, there's no talking, the sound quality is pretty bad, I leave in all the car sounds, <laughs> but um, slowly, bit by bit, I've got to a little bit of a better sound quality, and I'm starting to be really proud of my channel, so that's cool. Um, I mean, how did I come up with my channel name? ASMR unboxing. Um, it was just basically something I thought people would search for <laughs> and I didn't actually want to put um, my name into anything. I just wasn't really sure I wanted to share this part of my life with anybody I knew at that point. So. ASMR unboxing seemed pretty um, anonymous, I guess. <laughs> so yeah. So thank you, Mama Night Blossom, for your question. I feel like my answer was really long. This might be a long video. The next question is from Amy Ellis, and she says, "Yay! I've missed your video so much. Congrats on 1,000 subscribers." My question, or not so much of a question, and more of a life nosy, would be Where did you originally live in the UK? And how did you come to end up in France? Was it a hard decision, or something you always wanted to do? Um, okay, so the first question, where did I originally live in the UK? Is kind of a strange question to answer for me because I kind of lived a bit, a bit of everywhere. Um, my father was in the army, so we moved around a lot. I studied in uh, Glasgow and I grew up when I was younger in the north and I grew up mostly as a child in the north of Scotland in a little village. I won't say where, but um, I really loved my childhood. It was very free and I do miss Scotland a lot. Okay, and how did you come to end up in France? I came over because I had a friend that uh, was living with me in Glasgow and she was French and I don't know, I just came over. <laughs> just went for it. Um, was it a hard decision or something you always wanted to do? Um, neither. <laughs> um, it's not something I always wanted to do. I never thought about living abroad or anything. Um, and I think I was about 22 or 23, so it didn't seem like a hard decision. <laughs> it seemed like a kind of easy, why not, let's go kind of thing. I did give up my job to go without knowing how to speak French, but at the age of 22, 23, it just, I don't know, it just didn't seem very scary. Well, it was a little scary, but I don't know. I don't know if it's something I would be able to do now, but then it seemed fun. <laughs> Okay, so thank you Amy Ellis for your question. And the next one is from Reese's Fan 
21 and it is what is your favorite ASMR video to make? Um, who is your favorite ASMR artist and what is your favorite tingle trigger? And she also says congratulations on many well-deserved subscribers you deserve at least a thousand more oh that's sweet thank you racistfan21 so the ones that I really enjoy making at the moment are um, probably my Harry Potter unboxing videos from my Loot Crate um, subscription just because I'm so excited to see what's inside um, so yeah, from that point of view, I look forward to making them a lot and I'm finding it difficult at the moment to film in like a one, in one go for that reason exactly, <laughs> for the cars um, it's really unbelievably difficult to find a time that there's no cars going by and if I'm making a video that has talking and visual um, like this one for example it can be quite frustrating because once I get going with what I'm saying and then there's a the visual that goes with it like for example you probably noticed during this video that in the middle of a sentence there will be a soft fade in and fade out of the visual and basically that means the car went past <laughs> I'm just going to leave this car in <laughs> um, and that can get pretty frustrating because it takes about three times as long as it should to film and it kind of cuts you you're kind of like in the swing of it and then you have to keep repeating yourself and it's, it becomes a little less spontaneous but in the end it's worth it but videos that are easier to film, for example, are ones where there's just a visual. Um, there's audio as well, but just like noises, sounds, and you're not speaking. So that's a lot easier to cut the car noises out of. And you don't have to start an action again if there's a car going past. You just kind of edit it all together and it's fine. And I've noticed also talking only videos, you know, where it's just audio, like my recent one that I did about true crime podcasts. That's a lot easier to do as well, because you can cut the audio a lot easier when there's no image to make it look weird that you've cut it. So, I don't know, you hear it less, you see it less. Okay, so the second question is, who is your favourite ASMR artist? Um, that is absolutely impossible. <laughs> there are so many, so many talented ASM artists that I love and I just kind of flow in and out of the channels and I'll get hooked on one for a week and then jump over to another and if it's just... that's absolutely impossible <laughs> to answer. Um, so instead of answering that question, I'm gonna make a series of kind of shout out videos like, I don't know, like maybe add a section at the end of each of my videos with a favourite ASMR video or two or artist or something, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. There's so many amazing channels. Um, I just, I can't answer. Sorry. <laughs> um, and what is your favourite tingle trigger? So my first favourite a tingle trigger that I got was cardboard and it's still one of my favourites maybe like my favourite of all time but um, otherwise it's soft spoken, anything soft spoken I like um, with gentle sounds just like hand sounds on things <laughs> not necessarily like intense tapping or things like that I do like from occasion, um, from time to time, but no, there's this really subtle, almost accidental sounds that hands make on 
things on objects um, and then cardboard <laughs> and soft spoken so but I also go through phases of liking other things for a bit so yeah I hope that that answered the questions well okay so the next person that left a comment Future Primitive Soap Company and she says congratulations on 1k may you continue to grow at a fast pace your voice is one of my favorites thank you I actually find uh, soap making videos really relaxing um, and Future Primitive Soap Company does soap making videos and they're really relaxing and she's really sweet and nice um, you should go check out that channel. It's really fun. I think that she should make ASMR videos with her soap making. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Okay, so the questions. What is your hair color? Okay, so my hair color is red. <laughs> yes, I am a true Scottish lass. I have long red hair. I'm thinking of doing a hair brushing video with my actual hair. It's probably long enough to do a hair brushing video without actually showing my face, so I might do that. So yes, red, kind of, well, uh, it's not red like that kind of flashy red, like orangey ginger. It's more kind of like auburny. It's kind of darkened a little as I've got and what is your favourite food? I would say my favourite food is um, like my favourite meal to have when like I'm out or ordering or something is sushi um, it's quite expensive so I don't have it often and maybe that's why it stays one of my favourites because I don't overdo it but otherwise just like food rather than a meal um, I would say just any fruit. I love fruit. And what is your favourite type of holiday? My favourite type of holiday is going home. <laughs> um, I love going on a family holiday where we get in the car and we go on the ferry or the Euro Tunnel and we just to school. Um, we try and go and see as many of my family members and friends and things and try and kind of see things we haven't seen before as well. I'm going on holiday soon for a family wedding and then I'm going to go and try and see some friends and some other family and, and then on the way home we plan to drop down through Wales. So that'd be nice. Okay, what is your favourite book or your favourite album? Um, honestly, I don't think I could choose any of these. Um, it's really specific. Favourite book? I, I can't. I don't think I can. And favourite album? Also can't. For favourite book, I couldn't pick a book. But I could definitely say that my favourite author is Terry Pratchett. Um, I couldn't single out a book. I don't think I could. My favourite album, that is even harder. Um, I really love music. I love any kind of music, every kind of music. And that's just impossible. It's impossible. I couldn't say even my favourite artist, never mind an album. Um, at the moment I'm mostly listening to singer-songwriter, modern folk type music, but sorry, I can't answer that, so sorry. So thank you Future Primitive Soap Company for your question. I'll link her channel down below as well, you should go and check it out for some relaxing um, unintentionally relaxing soap making videos. Okay.
Okay, so the next question, or questions, are from Stephanie Bruno. Hi, Stephanie. The questions are, what is your favourite item you received from My Little Box? My favourite item I've probably ever received from My Little Box would be, you know what, it's not even a beauty product. Well, I guess a little, not really. Um, is the makeup bag that I got in my first my little box. I thought it was absolutely stunning. It was that kind of clear plastic ombre peach bag that I got. I might do um, a sounds video just with that bag. It's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, what's the second question? What item made the best sounds? That bag. <laughs> yeah, I think really it was that bag. Which ASM artist do you watch for inspiration? All of them. I know a lot of my answers are kind of cop-outs. I can't decide. I can't choose between things. But who do I watch for inspiration? Yeah, really just everyone. I often hang out on my subscription page. So I try to give all of the channels a watch. <laughs> But as I said earlier, I'm going to try and get specific soon and do some favourites. Maybe like some, I don't know, something specific. Um, how much time does it take to film and edit a video? Okay, so it can take a long time. <laughs> um, for example, just to set up the camera and the lights and the mic, make sure the batteries are charged and that the SD cards are all empty and ready to use. It can take about half an hour. I usually just listen to a podcast on my phone, in my earphones, um, while I'm setting all that up. Then to film, it takes for example, if I'm doing just sound, like a, just a trigger video with no talking, it usually takes maybe 15 more minutes than the actual length of the video to do, to film. And the editing is quite, quite fast for that one too. Maybe double the length of time it takes, um, double the length of the time of the video. Um, but when there is talking about a specific subject, or a Q&A video, for example, uh, it can take a really long time, anything up to like three or four hours, depending on the cars, basically, and if um, the sounds that I'm making record well, the trials that I do beforehand go well or not. But the thing that really makes uh, the filming process long is really the cars for me. And then editing can take a little longer. If there's um, talking, trying to get that narrative to flow through the video. Anything between 30 minutes, uh, well, anything between 20 minutes or even 15 minutes and 3 hours to film a video and then anything from half an hour to 2-3 hours to edit and then it takes anything from 10 minutes to an hour to render and then uploading onto YouTube you can take anything from an hour to five hours to upload. So it's a lot of time that goes into it. And then her question, her last question is favorite nail varnish. So that changes quite a lot, but my ultimate favorite um, is an Elite 99 gel polish. And it's kind of like a rosy 
colored, almost rose gold, but not too gold. And it's like a platinum-y, sparkly polish. I love it. I can't wear it too much because it's gel polish, but otherwise I just, I don't know, choose whichever color catches my eye when I need to do my nails. I have quite a collection. I need to do a nail varnish collection video. But mostly from like Kiko or Model Zone. So, thank you Stephanie Bruno for those questions. And the next question comes from Aisling O'Brien. Let me know if that's correct or not. <laughs> okay, so she says, congrats on a thousand subs. Thank you. Uh, how did you manage to pick up French? I'd love to speak it but found it so difficult to study. Um, I also found it very difficult to study, so um, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I spoke pretty much nothing when I arrived. Um, I could just like say hello, goodbye, and order food, pretty much, and badly at that. I basically picked it up from speaking to people. Um, it was a long journey. <laughs> I still can't write French perfectly. Reading is fine, just not reading out loud. Not great at that. It's alright. Um, but yeah, I just learned from speaking to people, listening, a lot of listening, and some audiobooks. What was his name? I can't remember his name, but yeah, I listened to some audiobooks on how to speak French in the first years. I'll, um, I'll put that on the screen. But they're really, really good. They helped a lot. And then just all the practical experience of just talking to people through the years. So, okay. So thank you, Aisling O'Brien, for those questions. And the next questions come from... Elisa Tang Vander and she says ASMR related questions. What are your favorite tingles? So I answered that in a previous question and the answer was cardboard. It'll always be cardboard. Does filming slash editing your videos also relax you? So basically the answer to this question completely and utterly um, depends on how many cars go past during my filming. If there's no cars, I can be super, super relaxed filming and editing. And if there are a lot of cars, it can be really, really <laughs> trying. I'm afraid. Okay, number three. How do your surroundings react? Or how did your surroundings react when you started doing this? Um, nobody really reacted because nobody knows. <laughs> My husband knows and he's fine with it. He, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't like ASMR. He actually would hate ASMR, but not because he thinks it's weird. He actually finds these kind of sounds really, really stressful. <laughs> Um, for example, eating sounds, people breathing, um, tapping on things, he finds that really stressful. But, in saying that, he thinks it's really cool that I do it, so that's fine. And he's really helpful, um, by not making any noise while I film. And things like that. He thinks it's really cool and really good that I'm doing it. So he's really supportive. And there's one other person that knows I do this. It's, it's a friend of mine. And she actually talked about some more videos and that she actually watched some of them when she was pregnant. And because of that, I felt safe to tell her that I do videos. So if she's watching, hey Helen. Yeah, so that's pretty much the only people that know I do it. But pretty much everyone I know watches YouTube. 
Um, so hence the no face reveal for now. <laughs> okay, so the next one is, did you get so good at this because of your daughter? When you are putting her to sleep or have to calm her? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe a little. Um, when she was young, I often sang to her softly. Mm, stroked her hair and things like that, so so yeah, maybe a little I've always been quite a gentle person in general so, but I guess everything kind of adds up, doesn't it? all of your life experiences go into making you the kind of person that you are, so I think I'll answer yes to that one so then we have noisy questions um probably gonna guess that you added a little I by accident, and that's nosy questions. Um, you talked about a husband once, but you don't wear a ring. Is that so it doesn't make extra sounds? Or any extra sounds? I don't actually wear a ring because we're not actually officially married. <laughs> um, so basically we are a thing called Paxed which is, I guess, in the UK, it would be just like a civil partnership. Um, it's quite common in France for younger generations not to get married, but to get paxed. And it just basically gives you the same tax rights and things like that. Um, we're not, not married, like on purpose or anything. I don't know, we just, I don't know, for now it's not our thing. So yeah, there's no ring for now. Um, how old is your daughter? My daughter is five and she's about to turn six. So she's getting pretty big. And will you ever do a face reveal? So as I said before um, in the video, I probably won't be doing a face reveal anytime soon. ASMR is so misunderstood and so new for now and something about online presence I think it also is still misunderstood and I don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see okay so thank you Elisa for the questions and the next one's come from I think Calamity, Calamity, yeah, Calamity, Calamity, yeah. A couple of questions. What is your personal favorite ASMR trigger? And that is cardboard sounds. Um, anything to do with cardboard sounds, like touching cardboard with the fingertips, or scratching cardboard, and tapping cardboard too. Who is your favourite ASM artist and why? I can't decide. I can't choose. There are too many that I like and I will make um, some other videos about that or add bits onto videos or something. I'm still working on an idea for that. So, have you ever experienced ASMR while listening to music? Hell yeah. A lot, uh, very often. In fact, the last time was probably about a few hours ago. <laughs> um, I absolutely love music and I get ASMR regularly from it. I get really into stuff, um, like really into the moment when I'm listening to music. The song I was listening to earlier was Monday by Matt Corby and I'll link the video in the description. If you want to try, you should listen to this video. Don't watch, just listen. Um, just like put it on your phone and put your earphones in, close your eyes, and just like standing up <laughs> um, in the middle of a room, like just nobody around or whatever, um, and just stand and listen to the music. Just kind of sway if you feel up to it. <laughs> and uh, 
I don't know, something about that just really, just, yeah, <laughs> you should try it. Okay, so my last question from YouTube is from Becky and the Machine. Um, hi Becky, and also hi the Machine. Where are you from and where are you living now? So, I am from Scotland and more precisely from the Highlands and where are you living now? I'm living in the north of France, about an hour away from Paris. Thank you, Becky. Okay, so that's all my YouTube questions and I have one little question from Instagram I don't have many followers, so I was happy to get one. So come and follow me on Instagram. And the question is from NYSUP or NYSUP. I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Um, how long have you lived in France and were you fluent before moving? I've lived in France for about 10 years now. It's quite a long time. And no, I was far from fluent when I moved here. I spoke very minimal French. Um, but most people are nice when you make an effort. Thank you, nice up. Or nice up. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have reached the end of my q and I hope it wasn't too long. Um, I wonder who made it to the end. Thank you so, so much to everyone that sent questions. Most of you I recognize from comments and things, and you're all lovely, and I'm happy to have you as subscribers. I hope to see you in all the other videos in the comment section. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this Q&A, and you found it interesting, and most of all, relaxing. I will probably do another Q&A a lot later on, maybe like 2,000 subscribers or something, I don't know. And once again, thank you to everyone who is subscribed to my channel. Making 1,000 subscribers has been a real treat, and I hope to continue a lot further. I hope that you have a lovely evening, and I'll see you next time.